studio live. I'm excited to be here. And uh, we are, I'm just finishing up my email. That's what I'm doing right now. And uh, I'll get a lot of notes like, thank you for, for this message. It really helped me when I needed it today about the Sunday letters. So that makes me happy. I appreciate that. Um, I also got to notice that Tidewater Bookstore is having their customer appreciation sale on Sunday. So I think I'm buying books for people for Christmas this year. And uh, books and uh, might make some small rugs. I haven't given people rugs for a long time. So I think I will. That's a good idea. Do you want one, Lorna? I always like, yeah, I'm stuck with your rugs. <laughs> All right. So uh, today I want to talk about um, how I organize my wool. I'm going to put a new rug on. I just finished two different rugs. I just got to go out here and hide something. So don't, 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 come, don't show me this. Don't come near here. I just got to put this away because that is for another day. So um, I want to talk about wool storage and people keep asking me. So I, I get carts. You can get these at, at, at a lot of different kinds of stores. I like carts so that I can pull it up. And when I'm working on something, I can have my tea. Tea and coffee are a big part of my life, really. Lorna's a big part of her life's hot chocolate. Coffee's a big part of your life, Ange. Coffee and wine. Coffee and wine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's everybody be honest here. So, um... Uh, I like a cart that I can pull around, so I like having one that has nothing on it. And these baskets here, um, you can, like baskets like this, you can find at Canadian Tire, you can find them at, you know, different different stores. What You just want to make sure that you measure so that they fit good on your cart. So, um, I, so I like to be able, I like these because I can, I like these because I can go, uh, from, you know, I can have a small one and a big one, and I can lift them around and change them. It's not a perfect setup, right? There's no, I've had a hundred setups over the years. None of them are perfect. So this one over here, um, that has my, this has my wool cloth in it, all beautiful. And I like that. Uh, and I have it done by color. And I just have it folded. And this was, again, you could have someone build you something like this or, oh my gosh, it's dusty. Heavens above. Definitely someone's not doing their job. Someone. <laughs> I, think, I think that would be my job, isn't it? I don't know. Holy moly. What a mess. Okay, so I like to have my cloth there. But Wanda Elliott was here last week, and many of you see Wanda on Wild with Wool. She was the one who won the, uh, the, one of our original things, um, one of our original contests. And she did the ostrich. Her daughter was in with her last week week and her daughter is a zookeeper and that's where Wanda got the inspiration for the ostrich and which so which makes you realize how authentic that rug was for her so um anyway what was I going to tell you about Wanda Wanda said that she's starting to put her cloth in with her wool yarn now that makes a lot of sense to me and I said look I was starting to do that too but she beat me to it so here is my white like so here are all my whites together right? And things start to get out of hand. But now I'm starting to put the cloth that I think I might want to work with, with that together, right? So that's a big thing. I always have my messy bits bin, and that's important. Now, these bins are great, but in the studio and at my studio at home, I use these bins. These are about four bucks each, and they're usually available at dollar stores, the different kinds of dollar stores. This yarn, for anybody who asks, is called Evening in the Garden. But I like these at home, and they work well for me. The only thing is, is I can't see all my colors through them, so I have to dig through them. And on my carts, they are too wide for my carts, and I can't stand that, and I like the... I like the, to be so they could go this way on my carts but then I couldn't get as much so that's why I don't use these in here so I also have this that I bought from Lisa at Mass Town Market and if any of you have ever been to Nova Scotia and you're traveling from Amherst to Halifax where do you guys stop on your way to Halifax Mass Town, Mass Town Market you get an ice cream you get a sandwich on the way back you get your vegetables beautiful beautiful store um and it has uh, a beautiful meat market across the street and a beautiful dairy. They make their own milk and their own cheese. And they have a gas station and they have a vegetable market. And they also have a gift shop. And in that gift shop, they carry my kit. So I bought these from Lisa at uh, Mass Town Market at the gift shop. And I like to organize my wool by color. So this is on wheels, which is great. Now, I just want to show you what not to do. 
don't do this. Like, please, it's just a mess. Look at it. So what I, what I really try to do about once every year, <laughs> let's be honest, if you just did this, if every time you got a skein of yarn, you tied it in a knot, it would be so amazing. And you could just keep it all. But if you do this, right, <laughs> you have a problem. So this is like a great piece, a great bundle of yarn, right? And even if I just take this now and just take one string and wrap around it, it's just so much more useful to me. Not as useful as that, which is laid out so easily and nicely. Now, yeah, there. This is, <laughs> this is my life, right? It's a little tangle sometimes. So... I'm going to show you what to do with a skein of yarn when I get when I get a good one here. So now all I can do with this, unless I want to spend two hours taking it apart. Uh, but see, I've gotten better and I'll show you. See, this is not good. These scissors are amazing. They're about 14 bucks. They stay sharp. You don't cut your linen with them. All right. So now I've got that. If I get one string and I can just tie it around it, it'll keep it. <laughs> Kathleen Kettle says, looks like my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, yes, you have nice, big, beautiful, curly hair. Now, if you were sensible, when you got your skein, you would take your skein, you would cut it on each end, and then you would knot it. And I think it's even better if you can cut the skein. And I talk about this in a course that I'm doing for the winter. I, I do talk about it a bit. But if you just took it and made it in smaller bundles... And then you could just take out what you needed. And it would be so much better than this terrible mess that I have. Look at that. If I could store that. But we have to deal with our blues. We have to do the best we can. So even if I just take them out and I just restructure them. But see, that blue, I always go by color. Now, that blue to me belongs down here. It's a little deeper. And I've got this one. Same thing. That's pretty deep. So that be belongs on the bottom pile. I'm going to have to take out my earrings. This mic doesn't, never likes my earrings. All right. Oh, look. Look, that's when I was good and sensible. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> like, it's so much easier. This is our New Zealand stream, you know. And see, Wanda Elliott, I was doing that. I was putting some of my cloth. I think it's a great idea to mix your cloth with your yarns. Now, here's a nice bunch of sari. And it's not in such a bad tangle that I can't do anything with it. Oh, look at that. I can get it back. Just take it, knot it, and then when you need when you need to use it, it's there and it's ready for you. Okay, what's everybody cooking for supper tonight now while I do this? What's what do you got on? Angela, what are you having? Well, Rich is working, so I'm gonna do something different. Oh, oh. No chicken. <laughs> no chicken. I'm probably going to do pork chops. You're going to do pork chops? Awesome. That's all I know how to cook. Lorna doesn't cook dinner. No. Her husband does all the cooking in her house, which is really nice. Ronnie? Ronnie can't go pizza. I don't know. Oh, is he thinking, he thinking about pizza? He's not about making pizza. Oh, that's good. Tell him about that potatoes that he makes. i got to try those. He just shreds potatoes in a frying pan with oil and fries them up. He, so he puts oil in a pan, he shreds the potatoes, and then fries the shredded potatoes. Oh. Now, do you guys like, what do you eat with them, ketchup? No, nothing. Nothing, just nothing. Because you could see, look at that. Now, see how this pile is so much better? And I'm putting the lights with the lights. Oh, another day when I was good. Those shredded potatoes sound so good. What's everybody cooking tonight? This was a day when I was good, but look, this belongs here. You know what's going to happen after I get this one all straightened out? I'm going to have to fix up on this one. Did we get in any... any roast, roast pork. Oh, roast pork tonight. Yum. A lot of people are having stew. A lot of people... See, it's that time of year, isn't it? It's that time of year when stew is calling out to you. So, see, that's a deeper color. So, I think those blues need to be down there. This one's having bacon with shredded Brussels sprouts. Oh, that's so good. I think I might have Brussels sprouts tonight, too. That sounds really good. I think I'm going to go to Sobeys and get some fish. So now here's a turquoise color. And so sometimes when I'm trying to organize, I don't know what goes where. So I just have to make a judgment and it belongs up there. 
So this is what I would encourage you to take the time to do is to organize, organize your yarns and your wools and start maybe tucking, oh, like if you find you're not using something, bring it to the top. This is our big merino. And see that really belongs down here, not up there. It's, where does this belong? What was it doing up there, right? And look, I got this beautiful slob just about ready to get in a tangle. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna spend some more time doing this week, I hope, if I get if I get to do it. There's a great big hunk of sari that was all tied in a knot. Now, if you want it to, when you get down to this area here, where you have lots of little bits of blues, pull all the big ones out. Anything that you have like an area off, See, that cream needs to go over with my creams, so I'm separating that. So what happened was I had a rug, and this was the sky, right? So what I sometimes do is I take all of those colors, and I put them together, like all the whites, so this was obviously, I used all of these colors in a sky. And I'll try and, just so I'm not wasting anything, I'll get all the lights together. And so this is like, within my blues itself, there'll be a messy bits of blues. And take that deep one out. And I find that this, like that right there, so now I've got a sky right ready for a small rug. So I'm going to keep that all together. Pull that out. Can you store your wool in plastic containers with lids? Uh, people do all the time. I think it's not a great idea because you can't see the wool. The wool is a natural material. It's kind of stocked up and doesn't get to breathe. So I like mine open. Um, now I have all of this. And this is all kind of the same too. And that could easily be, well, this is kind of bigger and kind of grayish so this batch here I'm going to take and do the same with and hopefully maybe this could be a water feature or something in a rug or maybe a blue hit and, like if I was doing a blue hit and miss but that belongs down there so then I have these little bits here everything is worthwhile I'm going to take my creams back put this over with my creams and then the little bits in my messy bits. Everything matters, like your messy bits. We've talked about that in different workshops that I've done. If you have that container of messy bits, you always have that like little tiny bit of orange or that little tiny bit of red. And, and look how much better this is of my light blues. But now we have another problem because I have all of these, right? And in that, I realize that this needs to go up here that this would be better up here, that this, this is, you know, not it perfectly. It's, it's fine, but it's very gray blue. So let's take all the blues that sort of have a gray cast to them. I'm getting a lot of questions about dust. How do you keep dust off your wool? Uh, wool is dusty. I, I, I do like, I have, um, I usually have a little, like, I don't keep it off my wool. I What I try to do is I try to keep it off my surfaces. So just dusting my surfaces um, around like my little cart table that I have. I have a little table here on wheels that I use a lot. Um, so this one is not it. It's easy to handle, right? Perfect. In the moss things, we use the... Uh, we use, yeah, we use a product. It's a pheromone trap. Um, I should have one around here somewhere. I'll go get get it for you. Um, write the date on them. There's a trap here. It's a pheromone trap. And so it attracts moths and the moths get in there. We don't have any moths, so we're lucky. But if you ever did have a problem, these you can find at Canadian Tire. You can also find them from uh, Insects Limited and uh, moth, I think it's mothcontrol.com if you, if you ever want them. Um, but we use these. This is a preventative method, right? So, and it also... Uh, but I'm very, you know, I, it's one of the things, like, I don't really like it when someone comes in here with a big bag of old wool, 
it's like it makes me nervous because I'm always worried. Uh, so I always say, like, let's have a look at that and make sure, you know. You have to be really careful about moths. So tie, that knot is so important. So this is kind of, I, I think that could go in there. But like these blue, see, this was for a project I was doing lately. And see, lately, I've been really good at the knotting. I've been like really conscientious about it. So I'm putting all of those in there. Because that was one of the colors. Look how beautiful they look together. And then the mid-tone blues I'm putting over there. And it, it's not, I mean, there's no exact science to it. It's more about your eye. And it, it's kind of like when you're choosing colors in your rug, it's the same kind of thing. But can you see how already how that was overflowing and a big mess? Because I was just stuffing stuff into it. But if you just take a little bit of time and, you know, it, it will get messy again. Like to me, this doesn't belong in any of those colors, right? That doesn't fit. So I'm just going to put that aside and deal with it later. I can take the navies and put it in with the dark blues here. I can see those working together. Oh, I've got some navy boucle. And then this is kind of a dusty one. Mid blues. And then there's this big pot of purple. Put that over with the purples. Another medium. And so it looked like it was taking up way more space than it actually took up, right? There's, there is lots of space here that I didn't see that I had. And every once in a while, and now so I have this sparkling Stellina. Well, you know what I think? I almost think like you need a bin because these ones at home, what I did was I created a bin that was for the mixed colors that didn't really belong any particular place. So... There's a nice turquoise. Now, where are we putting that? We don't have a. We have a turquoise bin over here that we had. Nope. Yeah, I've turned it into a dark green bin, so that's not going to work out. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put the turquoise. Well, you know, it's about your eye, right? For me, it's going in here. It's not going in with the royals. This is. So what's happened here is some of our deep. Deep blues are all going to get bound up together here. You know, like one strand of this is sometimes, this is Rasta. It's $50 a skein, $49.95 a skein. It's expensive yarn. One strand matters to me, you know. Even though I've got a bundle of it out there, I still think that it's important. So there we go. And this, this bundle here, this was a blue-green bundle. And I'm going to just keep that together like that. It's kind of a blue-green turquoise bundle. And I'm just going to pop that over here in the corner. This is my blue-gray. So I'm going to put these up here with the other blue-grays. These, to me, are very purple. So I'm going to put those over with the purples. This is royal. Goes in there. Ah feel like it belongs here but really I'm going to put it back there and then these are going in my messy bits okay right here now what about this I feel like again this has mostly purple but really I should create a bin well no it doesn't belong there I'll, I'll put it in with the purples, or maybe down here with my moles. And everything else is okay here. Well, no, not this, but I'm not going to bore you to death today. We did the blues. I showed you how, and you're constantly looking at your eye, you know, what belongs where. But do you remember what that looked like in the beginning? It was a huge mess, a huge mess. And now it's manageable again. And this thing is on wheels, yeah, like I said. Got a big one on the ground. This one hasn't even been opened. And... And it's a real, I want to show you about this. Like, it's a really, really thin yarn, right? But I'll use, like, six or seven strands together, and it will add, like, a nice sheen. So it's a very, very, so you can even use those, like, if you have friends who are knitters. What's it called, Dan? Uh, that was uh, Kid Silk Haze, a kid mole here. I don't think we have any of it left. So I'm going to put that in my Messy Bits bin. And over the next, and, you know, you don't have to do all of them at once. But this looks a lot better to me today uh, than it did when we started. And I'm going to throw this on the floor, and I'm not going to make you watch me do it. 
<laughs> but if it's thrown on the floor like that, will I leave with that like that? No. I will not leave this studio <laughs> until that's done. I just won't be able to, right? No. So I'm going to leave that for you guys. Now, how do we have much time left? I don't have my watch. Seven minutes? Okay. So um, with the live today, I wanted to show you some of the projects that I made, and I brought them in here last, when I made the course, uh, when I made the course, I used them at home, but I want to come out and I want to show you some of the pro projects that we have for our hooking at home for the holidays. So you can see I'm going to have to separate some of these. What a mess. Okay. All right. And Angela's been, Angela and uh, Kathy and, Kathy and Terry hung the rugs. Like I had little bits of rugs hung, hung everywhere. So I'll give you a quick little tour. But these are some little ones and these are all going up on the website. These little ones are 69, 129. They're all going up on the website uh, very shortly. Angela's getting them all up. And over here, I want to show you our little Christmas decorations. So these are some of the things that you will learn on our hooking at home for the holidays course. This is our Santa Garland with all the different Santas, all kinds of, all different nationalities the Santas are. And I just love this. Jackie helped me put this out and we explained to you how to do this in the course. We also did this gorgeous little garland with our, on our Christmas tree. And I had this on a real tree at home last year. And these letters, we talk about how to do the letters. There's also a pillow top and a stocking and a Father Christmas and a bunch of other things in that hooking at home for the holidays course. Uh, but the one of the nicest things is we just talk about using natural things to decorate and cutting boughs and just getting a natural tree. And it just is, it's a sweet course. We've had lots of people take us, uh, take, take it so far. It starts on November 15th and right now it's available for $69. It's not a, it's a mini course. It's not as huge as some of our other courses. And, uh, after, the 15th it goes to 89 is that correct angela that's right so on the for for now it's 69 dollars, and you'll have a nice little christmas holiday with me and we can talk about how we make all these things i just love this and i think mary wants this doesn't she mary yeah Jamal, who works here yep so mary's going to take that home right close to christmas and put it on her garland this is what i want to keep i do like the dots they make me happy can a new, sweet. sorry, Dan, can a new hooker do this course? Oh my gosh, yes. This is the simplest, little, easiest, sweetest little decorations and pillow, like there's a beautiful Christmas tree pillow top. There's all kinds. And our, I think Joe was trying to get some more packages together, the red packages and the white packages. And uh, Angie just made um, a Christmas, a Santa, Santa's uh, bundle. Uh, so there's a, so red and green bundle. I used a lot of white in my decorating, but these could easily be red and cream or green or any color that you want. If you're kind of a blue Christmas, they could be blues. How much is that that's pre-recorded? It's all pre-recorded. You don't have to show up at a certain time. It's all there. It's pre-recorded and it's ready for you whenever you want to. And you can do it at your own pace, at your own time. And it's a great deal at $69. Now I just want to show you some of the rugs. We've Angela, is that gone? That's not gone live yet. Our our rugs, our kit samples. That's not up on the website yet, is it? Yep. Oh, okay, great. So Angela posted. Um, we have some kit samples that we're not using anymore. Uh, I think we can still get the pattern, but we're not really selling them as kits. So the modern wash is available for sale as a hooked rug. This one is on our website. Uh, this was from a uh, color school. It's called the Marigold Garden. It's um, and we have this one here, the tree in the spring. We have Maritime Sky and Cumberland Fall. We had two of these. One of them's gone. The Fox in the Pines is available as a hooked rug. We're finishing that as a kit. And then what's this one called, Angela? It's the Golden Sky on the Mountains. And I love the sky in this rug. I just love that golden sky, and I love the layering in the landscape. So that's a that's a new rug uh, that I just finished, and it's an original design. And here we have two other kit samples. We have the the have we have the bowls. I think she's called them the teacups, but I, I would call them bowls. But anyway, uh, I think Kathy called it teacups. 
um, sna and we have the snail, and uh, we have these samples right here. We have the little fox and the owl. We have and the and the the original rugs that I hooked are now available on the website. We have the moose and the dog in the field, and of course we have this beautiful rug right here available on the website. Uh, limited knowledge of the heart, and we have modern woman there. So I feel like out of breath because I told you so much today. So keep an eye open. We're going to be doing more and more on our website and trying to do as much as we can from our website. Um, this Friday, if you are, a, this Saturday, if you are a member of the Harbor, please remember that we have a creative coaching call on Saturday for members of the Harbor Masterclass only. But uh, if you are a member of the Harbor Masterclass, Angela will be sending out a link on Friday. And we have our Zoom workshop coming up, our last Zoom, on that is uh, the last Wednesday of the month. So thank you so much for being with us, for uh, it being caring about rug hooking and caring about making and uh, for sharing your rug hooking with others. We really appreciate it because we know that when you, when you uh, hook rugs, it just adds a lot to your life and it has added a lot to mine. So thank you very much. I'll see you. Have a great week. And uh, we went early this week because tomorrow is Remembrance Day and it is a day to remember the people who have been in service to us and the people who lost their lives in, in uh, the both world wars and uh, all the people in our armed forces. So thank you very much. Uh, we're going live to Wednesday today instead of Thursday. And thank you for watching. See you.